Thank you, everybody, for coming back and being with us at GRBC Kids Worship. I am so thankful to have you with us today. So let's get started with the word of prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for everybody who is with us today. Lord, I just thank you that you just surround us with your love and with the Christmas time coming around us, you know, this is not a normal time right now for us. And Lord, we just pray for your grace and your mercies. Lord, just give us strength to do what you would have us to do. And Lord, I just pray for your blessing on the word today. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So normally when I do lessons, I'm doing something about character, being polite, being thankful, being grateful. Well, this is a little different because Christmas is just around the corner. Many are thinking about shopping, presents, the food they want to eat, how much traveling they need to do with going to go fa see family and friends, uh, putting up decorations, and just getting out. So this year, a lot of things are different. It, I mean, it is what it is at this present time. But we should not forget that at this time, it's most importantly, we really need to be celebrating the birth of Jesus. We should not put that on the back burner. In the Gospels, and I've talked about the Gospels before, in the New Testament of the Bible, the Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So... In the Gospels, Matthew and Luke tell us more about the birth of Jesus. Mark and John don't say much about the birth. And for the first time, you see, when they talk about Jesus, you see Jesus as an adult. However, Mark, Luke, and John do talk about John the Baptist, who actually is related to Jesus. And right now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about John. So, John and Jesus are actually cousins. That's right. They are cousins. John is best known as John the Baptist, who was also known as the messenger. Jesus is our, the Messiah, sent to save us from our sins. We don't know much about them as kids. The Bible stops literally at the birth of Jesus, and then you see him older. Now, there you do see one snippet of Jesus, and that's when he's 12 years old, but you don't know anything from the time that they were born until, literally, until they're adults. So, it's, so the best way I know, I want to talk more about John the Baptist. So back in the day, many, many years ago, there were individuals that were called town criers. They would stand on the corners yelling all kinds of important information. And John the Baptist was the town crier for Jesus. John was the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, who were an elderly couple living in the hills of Judea that were childless. An angel appeared to Zechariah and told him that Elizabeth would at last have a child. She would give birth to a son, and he would be named John. John would have the spiritual gifts of the Old Testament prophet Elijah, and he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. After his birth, we don't know anything about him until he's older. John the Baptist is the messenger that we are told about in Isaiah. So this was prophesied in the Old Testament, in Isaiah. And, that, and it said that he will cry out from the wilderness about the coming of the Messiah, who is Jesus. So I would like to read... Uh, in Mark and John, 
the first parts where we learn a little bit more about John the Baptist. So in Mark chapter 1, in verses 1 through 8, here begins the wonderful story of Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. In the book written by the prophet Isaiah, God announced that he would send his son to earth and that a special messenger would arrive first to prepare the world for his coming. This messenger will live out in the barren wilderness, Isaiah said, and will proclaim to everyone must straighten out his life to be ready for the Lord's arrival. This messenger was John the Baptist. He lived in the wilderness and taught that all should be baptized as a public announcement of their decision to turn their backs on sin so that God could forgive them. People from Jerusalem and from all over Judea traveled out into the Judean wastelands to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from camel's hair, and he wore a leather belt, lo ate locusts, and wild honey were his food. Here is a sample of his preaching. Someone is coming soon who is far greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to be his slave. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you in God's Holy Spirit. In John chapter 1, 1 through 23, before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him, and this life gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent John the Baptist as a witness to the fact that Jesus Christ is the true light. John himself was not the light. He was, the only, he was only a witness to identify it. Later on, the one who is the true light arrived to shine on everyone coming in, into the world. But although he made the world, the world didn't recognize him when he came. Even in his own land and among his own people, the Jews, he was not accepted. Only a few would welcome and receive him. But to all who received him, he gave the right to become children of God. All they needed to do was to trust in, sorry, forgive me. All they needed to do was to trust him to save them. All those who believe this are reborn, not a physical rebirth resulting from human passion or plan, but from the will of God. Forgive me, uh, I lost my place, so please forgive me. And Christ became a human being and lived here on earth among us and was full of loving forgiveness and truth. And some of us have seen his glory, the glory of the only son of the heavenly father. John pointed him out to the people telling the crowds, this is the one I was talking about when I said, someone is coming for who is greater by far than I am, for he existed long before I did. We have all benefited from the rich blessings he brought us, brought to us. Blessing upon blessing heaped upon us. So I'm going to stop it right there. So John the Baptist has a very, very important part of the story of Jesus. And I'm going to stop right there because I just want to say we will learn more about John as we learn more about Jesus, because you cannot separate the two. You have the person who's telling you in advance that the Lord of God is coming, and that's Jesus. And he has a message to get to us that we need to pay attention to. So right now, we're going to end our lesson right now. And I will talk to you later. It's been a blessing and an honor to talk to y'all today. And I hope you have a good evening.